afternoon, and thank you for joining us for today's webinar, In Their Face, Making the Most of Home Shows, Conferences, and Events. My name is Jen Clark, and I'm a Senior Marketing Manager here at Surefire Local, and I'm also joined in this same room by our CMO, Sashi Bowenkanda, and our Webinar Ninja, Steve Eastwack, who is ready and excited to help answer any questions you have during today's webinar. So speaking of those questions, there's a panel on the right side of your screen. It includes a question box. So why doesn't everyone who is on today's webinar go ahead and locate that right now and type in where you're joining us from? Great. We've got Maryland, uh, New Orleans, Gainesville, Michigan, Calgary. Nice. So it seems like everyone has found the question panel. And we hope throughout today's webinar you'll be asking us questions and sending your commentary. We'll also be sending messages throughout today's webinar, so please go back to that question box and look at it periodically. Moving to the next slide, we are very excited to announce the launch of our brand new Surefire Local Marketing Cloud. What if I told you that you could accomplish these seven items you see before you in the first seven minutes on the Surefire Cloud? It makes it simple to control and manage and optimize your digital marketing, all with a secure login. To get perspective on how your marketing is working, Business owners can get all their marketing data in the, in the dashboard in the cloud. And we're going to just move on to the next slide, one of my favorite parts. Today, one lucky attendee is going to take home a Google Home. We'll be announcing the winner at the end of today's webinar, so stay till, till the very end of today's presentation. Also, we don't want you to go home empty-handed. Everyone today who is on today's webinar is eligible for a Google Chromecast when they complete a digital marketing consult. We'll give you more info on that later. Most importantly, today we are joined by Hillary Berman, who runs a firm called Popcorn and Ice Cream. Sounds really tasty. At her firm, she advises business owners on utilizing best aspects of marketing, especially making use of home shows to drive more growth. Hillary is the author of Customer LLC, the Small Business Guide to Customer Engagement and Marketing, and she's a Google Small Business Advisor. And with that, I'm going to hand things over to Hillary. Cool. Thanks, Jen. Um, I'm excited to be here and to share ideas and best practices for how to make home shows and any other events you're participating in, um, how to make them really work for you, and how to make them as powerful for your company and driving sales as possible. Um, a lot of times, folks tell me that they don't get as much out of their events as they'd like, that they've invested a ton of money, um, but that they don't get the ROI. <clears throat> And in most cases, I find that it's not that the event wasn't right for them, but more that they didn't execute as well as they possibly could have. So my hope today is that we can give you some tips and some, some tricks to make your future home shows and other events even more impactful for your business. I know most folks on the call call it home shows, but we may be joined by some others who, anywhere you're setting up a booth, it could be a trade show, a conference, a community event. So if I use the words interchangeably, I'm really... I'm talking about any place, <clears throat> excuse me, any place that you're setting up a booth. Um, a lot of what we're going to cover today might seem like booth basics, but they're also the, the things that are most frequently overlooked and can be the most powerful for you. And they're the ones that make all the difference from a mediocre event to something that really, really supports your goals. So um, uh, one last note, I also know that some people sell directly to consumers, others are selling to other vendors or contractors. Um, and so there's something in here for everyone, so pick and choose what is right for you. Um, and let's, let's dive in, enough intro. I will stop talking through the intro stuff. Um, so let's start at the beginning. Why are you going to these home shows? Are you going because you're trying to reach potential clients? Are you going because you're trying to, or customers, are you going to meet new folks? Are you going to engage with customers that you already have and you don't get to see very often? Maybe you're going because you want to meet potential partners that you could work with and team for a job or a project. That's all, that's, those are all awesome reasons, and you may be exhibiting for any number of reasons. Um, whatever your reason is, that's okay. The, the thing to keep in mind is these home shows and trade shows, they're huge. Some of them have thousands and thousands of attendees, so it's important to know going in why you're there in the first place. So what are your goals and how are you going to measure against those goals? Is it the number of leads that you generate? Is it the straight sales that you get coming out of it? Um, even if you're, the one goal that I hear a lot that is not the most fantastic is we're going to raise awareness. And I always ask people, well, what does that mean to you? How are you going to judge awareness? And how are you going to make sure that 
the event or the home show is really delivering on that goal. Most of what we're going to talk about today is number one, acquisition. Um, that's where I get most questions and what most people tend to focus on, but we're going to touch on the other two as well. We can certainly talk about that. I'll share my contact info with everyone at the end. Happy to chat about with you offline after the webinar, anything like that. So let's talk about goals. Too often, um, companies that are going to home shows or other events, they think simply being there that the attendees and the sales, they're just going to come to them. It's the same concept of I'm going to stand up a website and people are going to come to my website. And because we're on a call with Surefire, we know that everyone knows that you can't just stand up a website. It takes a little more to get that traffic to your website. And the same thing is true at events. You can't just be there and have a booth. Um, or people think, well, someone comes to my booth, I'm going to tell them everything there is to know about my company, and then they're just going to buy. Or that someone's going to take my brochure or my business card, okay, I've achieved my goal, I've given out all my marketing materials, that must mean it was a really successful show. Um, maybe you are selling right there on the floor, and you close deals, big, small, either way, right on the show floor. But a lot of times I find exhibitors are, are not at these events. They're not securing a commitment right there in that moment. It certainly would be nice, and I love the companies that can do that, um, but that's not always the case. So I'd like to keep it simple and say, what are our three goals for how we're going to actually convert those folks to actually becoming leads and sales after the event? And we're going to break each one down a little bit further. Um, but first of all, we need to give the attendees at the show a reason to care. We have to get them to talk to you. got to get them to talk to you in the first place. Um, most of these shows have dozens or hundreds of booths. I don't know many attendees at all that are going to stop by and talk to each and every exhibitor, each and every booth. So we want to make sure that we're attracting attendees to your booth and getting them to talk to you in the first place. The second thing is give reasons a reason to remember you. You need to engage with them and make connections. Um, just to, and it's also going to help you because just as every booth isn't relevant to every attendee, every attendee isn't going to be the right fit for your business. So the focus here is to get people talking and engage them in conversation. Find out if what they need lines up with what you offer. And when you have these real conversations and you provide them with the valuable information, then you've, got to, you've been able to qualify your leads and the attendees have a reason to remember you because they've had this great conversation with you. Um, finally, on the flip side, is giving attendees a reason to engage. So you're trying to engage with them, but you want attendees to also engage with you and feel really great about handing over their contact information. That is the biggest piece here is in your ability to follow up. So where I'm going with this is putting your brochure or your business card in, someone hand, in someone's hand, that's great. They take the materials. But the days that these shows, they're long and the conversations are many um, for both you and the attendees. So it's really easy for an attendee to misplace your business card or accidentally leave materials that they were really interested in at the time, but they accidentally leave them behind and then they can't remember who it was they were talking to. Um, but when you have their information, you have their contact information, you have the ability to follow up with them and not wait for them to call you. And to me, this is the most important of the three goals, but it's also the one where if we're going to stumble as exhibitors in our booth, this is where we often fall short, is in gaining that contact information. Um, so let's, let's break each one of these down a little bit more at a time, because that's what's going to really drive, drive the success for your event. So first, going back to enticing booth visitors, getting them to talk to you. Um, we all know exhibit halls can be overwhelming. They are for you and for the folks who are there. Um, aisles and aisles of booths, and everyone has valuable information to share. Some of it more valuable than others, you know, in your opinion, but um, it's what, how do you stand out? There are bowls and bowls of squishy balls, water bottles, candy, um, and beyond the expo itself, there's all kinds of distractions, right? If someone's there with their colleague or their family member, somebody might want to go in a different direction. Uh, the phone rings, it's too hot, it's too cold in the exhibit hall, you name it. There's a million things that are beyond our control. Um, and the phone is a whole new one. Somebody's getting a, you know, you might be involved in a really good conversation, but their phone vibrates in their pocket. And nothing, we can't do anything about those things. But we do have a lot that is in our control that we can use to really get those attendees to our booth and then keep them there to talk to us. Um, the first way to draw people to your booth is before you even set foot into the home show. Invite the folks that you already know to stop by your booth, whether they're customers or prospects or 
friends in the industry or anything, make sure people know that you're there. So send an email out, include your booth number so that people know where to find you. Um, if it makes sense for your business, you can schedule times, offer to schedule a time with them while they're at the show to meet for dinner, meet afterwards for a drink, something like that. Schedule an appointment um, to come to your booth, see your new products, demo your new services, those kinds of things. If you're doing anything fun in your booth, which we'll get to in a few minutes, if you're doing a raffle, a giveaway, something like that, make sure people know. Um, this kind of email is a really good way to keep in touch and nurture those existing relationships if you are going to reconnect with existing customers. Um, and this applies to both folks selling to consumers or to other businesses. People want to know that you're there. Um, jumping to the last bullet for a second, social media. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, these are all really good to let people know you're at an event, whether you, you're using it for your business or for personal use. Make sure people know you're there. It's a, and a lot of times these, these shows and these events now have event hashtags that they're encouraging people to use, um, especially with location tracking now. You can tag in, in your Instagram posts or if you're doing Snapchat where you are at any given time. Um, so you want to make sure to use those things so that it's really easy for others to find you and respond to you and, and say, oh, this person's here also. Um, and so then you can also engage in conversation in that way. So once you're at the event, you can see who else is there, who else is, at the, who else is there, who's using the hashtag. You can engage with them and say, oh, I'm so glad you're here. Please stop by or I'm going to stop by your booth. Um, the last tip on social media is people love taking pictures of themselves. And they love things that are fun that make their pictures more fun. So if you have anything in your booth, whether it's a fun backdrop, props, signs, anything that makes social media posts more interesting, even in the seemingly you know, least interesting industries, it's amazing what I'm seeing people doing. There's a concrete company that's doing incredible things with their social media. Um, so this is a really good way to engage people. The bottom line of all these tips is you just want to make sure that someone knows you're there. The worst thing that can happen is somebody, you find out after the fact that someone was there who wanted to meet you or you wanted to meet them. Um, we kind of skipped over candy. and We skipped over you and your team. We're going to get to those things um, in a few minutes. Um, you also want to make sure that your booth looks fantastic. So this is making sure that your booth is, it, it's attractive. It's not just a folding table. Um, you have posters that speak to any specials you have or things things like that, that can communicate to people, this is what's happening. One of the cheapest and easiest things I've seen is just foam core. You get your posters printed and mounted on foam core, and you pop them on an easel. You can change them for every show as you have different things that you're offering. Um, getting back to candy and the freebies, people obviously love it. You can get branded swag that will make attendees very happy. I don't know if anyone has kids, but I'm seeing more and more pop sockets and fidget spinners show up in trade shows and booths these days, which my kids are very, very appreciative of. I'm not sure that I am with all the fidget spinners around the house, but um, any kind of giveaways are great. It gets folks over, it gets them talking, which is really the goal. Um, and the last piece is you and your team. It makes me cringe when I walk around the show floor and I see booth staff staring down at their phone or their laptop, or they're clearly in a conversation with a colleague and not interested in anyone walking by. That is, there's just nothing less welcoming to an attendee than a booth, someone in the booth that, um, that seems disinterested. So you're, you and your team, you're there. They, um, it, it's a great opportunity to talk to people. That's why you're there. So one thing on the being present and being there is being in an exhibit, in an exhibit hall, it's a really good opportunity to get out and walk around and talk to other people. So talk to the other exhibitors. You never know who's a good, another good business to partner with or that might be able to refer you business. And sometimes those connections at these home shows and other events are just as important as the one, the connections you make with attendees. Um, okay, so now we've got these folks in your booth. What are we gonna do? How are we gonna talk to them? Maybe they stop by for the squishy ball or the Snickers bar, but whatever the reason is, you've got them there. Now you have to connect with them. So. I always like to start asking the attendee about them. Where do they live? What do they need? What are they looking for? Any of those kinds of things. Get them, just get them engaged in a conversation. Find a way to connect with them. Maybe it's you both love the Nationals. Maybe you both love the Orioles. Um, maybe you grew up in the same neighborhood where they live now. Maybe you know someone who worked for their company once before. Anything that gets that conversation going, um, it's really, it's remarkable what you might find out about people 
a little personal anecdote I like to share when I talk about this. I have a client who is <clears throat> an absolute master on a show floor. I've, I've never seen anyone like it. It's, it's really incredible to watch. Anyway, I was at a conference with her once, and she somehow uncovered in a conversation with someone she had just met that that person knew my uncle, and they worked on a Doctors Without Borders trip together. I mean, completely random. You just never know, but somehow she found that out, and it was a really great start of a conversation that then led to a very lucrative customer for her. So the point of all of it is by engaging in a conversation, you have this great opportunity to learn more about the person, learn more about this person who's going to become a lead, and then have the ability to pitch your company. It comes very naturally once you've made that connection with them. Um, so everyone has their formula for talking for an, what's called an elevator pitch in the marketing world and how you do your quick, simple 30-second speech on your company, this is mine. So what is a simple statement on your organization? No buzzwords, no value proposition. As marketers, we're really good at that. Um, just who you are, play them simple, tell them about who you are. It helps them get what, you, what you're selling. Then make sure to be clear who you help. So a lot of times we're very quick in marketing to say, our company helps customers or our help company helps clients. But if people don't know what client or customer means to you, then they don't know if they are a good fit for that. So define what that means. Maybe it's we help homeowners. Maybe it's we help general contractors that work on condominium complexes. You know, whatever it may be. But define what that person is to you so that the attendee that you're talking to can see themselves as being relevant for your product or service that you offer. And then a quick example of your work. So we help, you know, we help provide, so Popcorn and Ice Cream is a marketing consulting firm that works with small businesses to help them grow their businesses. For example, we helped a new local grocery store have a grand opening and drive people through their doors opening weekend and in the months to come. So that people know, okay, here's an example of the kind of work that you do. The goal of the whole thing is not to tell someone everything there possibly is to know about your company or about your product. You want to make sure, because you don't have that kind of time, and it's not really necessary to get them going. Really, the only goal is to get someone to ask you another question to keep the conversation going. To me, that's the biggest goal, is just to get someone to ask a question. So the one thing to be careful of is to make sure, we're going to get to the booth team in a second, but making sure everyone in your booth knows the pitch and knows what you're trying to communicate. Sometimes the folks who go to home shows or go to booths, they're not the people who are in marketing and sales every day. They might be out in the field. It, just, it depends on who's on your exhibit team. So make sure everyone knows the message, everyone's speaking from the same script. That way it's, a, it's really clear to any, to any attendee that comes through, they're getting the same message. Um, you make sure you prep your team, the other thing to be prepared for with your team is make sure that you understand objections that you might receive. So what are the reasons that people push back on you and say, oh, you're not right for me because? Um, make sure that you're ready with the, to address those. So sometimes they're going to have a very fair reason or rationale, but sometimes they simply need more information to understand that you actually are a really good resource for them and they just didn't understand why. So that's the goal. It's just, Get people engaged in conversation, asking questions, because that all leads to your ability to get to the contact information. Because to me, this is it. This is the goal. So even if you want to raise awareness, securing contact information, that's your bottom line, because that's what enables you to follow up and close sales. Um, there's no better way to position yourself for a good outcome, no matter what your goal is, than if you have the contact information. So a couple of key points here, take notes on everyone you meet. You're going to meet, a, hopefully you're going to meet a lot of people. By the time you're done with day two, conversations from day one are clouded. And by the many things since then, as well as the text message from your husband or wife about the kids needing a permission slip for camp or this or that, you know, there's a million things going on. So make sure you have notes on everyone that you've met. You can put them on the back of someone's card. You can put them on a piece of paper or a lead on a notebook um, in their lead record. I'm going to get to the technology piece of things in a second. But set yourself up for success. Give yourself that information that you need to remember who someone was, what they were interested in, what you promised them about how you're going to follow up. Um, and then that way you have that information when you go to follow up. 
Your notes do not have to be formal or structured. They're just there for your own benefit so you can review them at night after the show, the next day, the week, when, the next day, in the next week when you get home, any of those kinds of things. Um, don't be afraid to take notes. It's, a lot of times people say to me, oh, well, I don't want to seem rude by jotting things down. Absolutely not. It is not rude at all. People appreciate that you want to remember what you talked about. So if you say, you know what, hold on one second, let me just jot this down, I don't want to forget, they actually appreciate that. And they feel that you have taken the time and the care to, to remember what you did talk about. Um, nothing wrong, so nothing wrong with that at all. Um, the other thing that sometimes people say is, you know, well, are they going to be upset if I put them on our mailing list? At this point, most people know if they turn over their business card or they enter a raffle, give you their contact information, they're going to be added to your mailing list. It's sort of expected at this point. So um, if you're selling in a business-to-business -business environment, sometimes you're going to um, sometimes you're going to end up with people who say, oh, I ran out of cards. Sorry, you know, and they're going to try to avoid giving you their contact information. That's great, but you're above that. You're going to say, oh, no problem. Here's a raffle slip, you know, or let me just jot it down. I'll write it on the back of my card. Or it, as you can scan, which we're going to get to in the next slide in one second, any way scanning people's badges to grab their information, any way that you can get their information is ideal. We're not going to push to the point where we're offending people, but the notion of I don't have my card, that's okay. We can usually get around that one. So let's talk about booth supplies. I keep mentioning the, um, the lead capture and the technology. These are some of my favorite supplies for an event. They're sort of my exhibit must-haves. If I could take these things, I would take these over an end cap or a double size booth. Although I would certainly love an end cap and a double size booth if I'm at an event or a show. But you can make the most of any location in an exhibit hall. So my number one favorite tool is the lead capture app or a lead capture machine. Some shows have these, some shows don't. They're increasingly more popular. That's what um, in the top left corner where it says Fargo, that's a screenshot of um, the lead capture app from a recent show I did with a client or oh, two years ago now, I guess. I was trying to remember when I took that screenshot. Um, but these apps allow you to scan badges and capture information really quickly and easily. Sometimes you scan, sometimes you take down an, um, an attendee number, but it's awesome because you can, it pulls in all the contact information they've provided to the show to register for it. It provides it to you. So if they've given their email address, their phone number, their mailing address, any of that information, you have automatically captured it. It is one of my absolute favorites. Um, it's just, it puts everything right at your fingertips. If you don't have that or people are pushing back, you can also consider doing a raffle or a giveaway where someone has to turn over their information to, um, in order to participate. You can also be giving away samples, product samples. If you're, you know, a white paper or tip sheets or anything like that where you can give someone an incentive as a reason to get them to give you their contact information. Again, we don't want to push, but you want to make it as easy for them and as less likely to cause a fight as possible. Um, right underneath of that is one of my absolute <laughs> biggest show hacks is carpet padding. Exhibit hours are really long. If you're already ordering supplies for your booth, some shows come with carpet, some don't. It depends on, maybe you're on a a concrete floor and they don't even have carpet as an option, but if you have the option, pay for the extra padding. <laughs> this is a this has nothing to do with sales. This just has to do with keeping your attendee or your your booth staff really happy. Your feet will thank you. It makes a world of difference for your back and your feet. Um, I'd like to throw that one in there just because it makes everyone much happier. Um, the notepad and the pen. I keep a notepad and a pen or note cards or whatever with me all the time, even if it's scrap paper. I am as big a technology person as anyone, but when you're standing in front of someone, it's hard to take notes really, really quickly in your phone and even in the lead capturing app. Um, Shashi just popped in that he loves notepads too. So <laughs> even the technology geeks and all of us, you can take notes so much faster on paper or on the back of someone's card, but really just making sure you have it right there to be able to take those notes that we talked about and move quickly from one conversation to the next. I've been in many scenarios where I've got a bunch of notes, I draw a line just to divide them, and then I'm on to the next conversation, and I come back to my notes an hour later because I've just been in back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back conversations. It just is much quicker to get through the process. Um, the tchotchkes, we already talked about the tchotchkes. Those fidget spinners are killing me. 
Um, and lastly, the marketing materials. So I know I've been pushing and pushing on getting the contact information so you can follow up, but you definitely want to have something attendees can take away and that they can have to remember you and learn more about you after they walk away. Even if it ends up in the trash, um, which honestly a lot of them do, and more and more I'm finding people really don't read. We spend a lot of time and energy worrying about every word in our copy, but I wish I could say people read every word. I don't really think they do, but I still really like to give people something that they can walk away and have that brand in front of them and that the high level information that they can scan and look at so they can come back to it. Um, it doesn't have to be massive or heavy. It definitely shouldn't be because people don't like to carry things. But just the basics of what you do. Um, this one I don't have a picture for, but one last note in terms of prep, and this is where the mom and me comes out. I have three boys, um, ages three to 10, so we are always running in different directions, so we have to be organized. Um, I like to make a packing list for our booth. So it's everything I'm gonna need, even if I've done the show a million times over. So what am I gonna need from the brochures and business cards, the giveaways? If we're doing candy in our booth, do we need a container to put the Hershey Kisses in? You, everything that you need to have a booth that's successful. I also include on that list and bring along with me emergency supplies, extra pens, paper, tape, stapler, any of those kinds of things, and two other very mom-oriented things, snacks. Sometimes the days can be long and it's hard to get away to get food. So to keep your team up and motivated and engaging to get those leads, go to Costco, grab a case of granola bars, grab some protein bars, whatever it may be, just make sure they're relatively clean and easy to eat. Um, so that you have, you're there and you've got the energy you need. Um, and the other thing that I include, and it's not just because I have a toddler, but I include baby wipes in my booth emergency kit because spills happen, things happen, any of those kinds of things. Um, they are, baby wipes are just incredibly valuable in a lot of scenarios. Um, so before you go to the event, last thing, we've talked about what you're going to do at the event. Let's make sure we get your team ready to go. So are they going to be able to do, you've got this great vision, you're sitting on this webinar, you're all excited, hopefully, about going and having this really successful booth, but what about everyone else on your team who's going to be working the booth? Are they as prepared as you are? So getting together a meeting with your team before you go to the show, and even if you're going to shows every week, what do you, what's changing week to week? What do people need to know? <clears throat> are you launching a new product? Do you have special pricing for a limited time? Any of those kinds of things that's really important that everyone knows what's going on. So I'd like to get a team a meeting together where we talk about the goals for the show, the process that we're going to follow. Maybe at one show you have lead capture and the next one you don't. So how are you going to go about that? Um, does everyone have each other's cell phone numbers? Um, having a well-prepared team is just a huge contributor to having a really good event. So going through all the details, all the logistics to make sure everyone's ready. So, okay, we've covered a lot in terms of the pre-show prep and how you're going to handle it. I want to take a quick breather and give everyone a little a little chance to take a breath, stop taking notes, even though you can get this um, on the recording, and turn it back over to Jen for a quick second, who's going to jump in on the poll here. Yeah, thanks, Hillary. Um, it's all been great information so far, so now we're going to just take a quick water break and see from the teams just launched the poll. So before we move forward to the second part of the presentation where we talk about converting those trade show leads into sales, we're doing a quick poll. We're going to ask you if you'd like a 10-step reviews and reputation checklist, something that you can take back with you and use in the future as you're managing your online reviews and your online review strategy. Um, you can get this, this checklist by just answering the poll. It's on your screen right now. You can say yes or Hopefully you won't say, not at the moment. <laughs> um, and we'll let that run for just a minute here. And when you do answer the poll, we'll also reach out and we'll show you the Surefire Cloud. Like I mentioned earlier, the Surefire Local Cloud makes it simple for you to control and manage and optimize your digital marketing all under a secure login and also has features that help you see and respond to reviews and much more. Also, while we run this poll, don't forget to send us some questions that you have for Hillary. We can, we're going to do a Q&A at the end of today's webinar, addressing any questions that you all have. And it's been so great so far with all of you. We love all of your participation, your questions, and your engagement. You've been a great audience. 
All right, we're at 83 voted, 83 percent. Great. Thanks, everybody. We'll pass this back over to Hillary now. Okay, so <clears throat> now that everyone has, I hope, said yes, because I've had a demo of all the Surefire products, and I think they're kind of amazing. Um, so I hope everyone said yes on their polls. And now let's jump back in. You've got all these great leads. Your team is, your team is prepped. Your booth is amazing, and you're ready, and now you've gone through all these processes, and you've got all these awesome leads from your home show. That's all well and good, Hillary. Now what, right? So this is where... Again, all too often organizations come back, companies come back, they dump their list of new email addresses and leads into their ongoing marketing list, and then there's no dedicated follow-up. And it makes me cringe every time I give someone my contact info, and then I never hear from them again. And I want to hear from them again. That's why I've given them my information so that they reach out to me and they follow up so that I can continue the conversation, whatever it may be. So you've worked so hard to connect with these attendees, have an awesome show, engage with them, to do nothing with these new relationships is just, it's a huge loss, and that's where you lose your ROI. So let's talk through how to follow up with all these folks that you've now met at your shows. Um, first things first, go through your leads and your notes and get organized. So make sure that sometimes at a show it's easy, you end up with, you might have your lead capture system, but you still have four business cards and three notes, and you've got stuff in different places. So make sure that Everything is all together and whether you've collect, wherever you've collected that information and it makes it into your organization's CRM system. So even if your, CR, if your CRM is Salesforce and you're in, you know, or Infusionsoft and you have these big platforms, that's great. Or if you're using an Excel spreadsheet or you have a wall of Post-it notes, whatever your CRM system is. Now, if you have an Excel spreadsheet or a wall of Post-it notes, we should have a separate conversation. But, um, but go through your notes. Is there anything else you remember or anything additional? You know, you see a note and it says, Hillary was wearing a black dress and she talked about the fact that she has three boys. And then that reminds you, oh, you know what else? We also talked about blah, blah, blah. Take that time to write it down, add it in, um, because you won't remember another week or two weeks later. So, and then as you import your leads and you bring them into your system, if your system allows for it, I definitely encourage people to tag the leads some systems use tags, some use um, lead source fields. They have different ways that people go about doing it, but make sure you tag where that lead came from, the specific event, and the specific year. So if you go to the same home show year after year, or maybe it's quarterly, however they are, make sure you assign it so it doesn't just say this particular show. It says show and year, so you know where they came from. That same client I was telling you about who's really great at working the floor she had a lead come through her website just last week, and she called me and said, I can't believe this. We just I looked up this lead in our database, and we met this person at the Enspur conference in 2010, and it's finally converted seven years later, um, which is crazy. But we could see that it wasn't just from the Enspur show, which just finished, but it was from that show seven years ago. So keeping an eye on where you met them. Um, if you're not the one, you may have been the one at the show, but if you're not the one responsible for follow-up, make sure that whoever is on your sales team has all of the information they need to follow up with the contacts. So it might mean more than just throwing it into the CRM. You might need to take a meeting with that person, go through your notes, provide any additional detail, help fill in the blanks that they're really empowered to have a good conversation. Um, no matter who's in charge of the follow-up, make sure that you outline the to-dos for each lead. It's documented so everyone knows um, knows what to do and how to get those leads followed up with. That's great. How are you going to follow up? Um, first of all, with everything organized um, and you've, you're ready to roll, time is of the essence, right? So exactly when you follow up is going to depend on your specific business and your sales cycle. Or if folks had to travel to the, to the show and then they have to travel home, I would not suggest putting the hard press on them three hours after you met them. But you do want to follow up in relatively short order, definitely within a week. Um, and again, if your sales cycle is shorter and you know that people make decisions within three weeks of finding this information, then you're going to need to be a little quicker than if you know that people make these decisions. It's a longer sales cycle over the course of a year. So, <clears throat> excuse me, if you were really successful, you might be saying to me, Hillary, you want us to follow up with every single person within a week? No, not everyone. Um, I would definitely break out your real leads from the people who were there just for the swag or the freebies or the candy. Um, for your super hot or warm leads, and you know, again, you can note that as you're going through. So 
for your super hot or warm leads, I would prioritize those first, focus on them, send each of them an individual email. Even if your company uses marketing automation, which I'm a really big fan of, we can talk about that separately for hours and hours too. Um, but personalize your notes. Make sure that the, the, especially that first one, even the automation systems usually have a field for that um, so that you can fill in and make it feel more personalized. <clears throat> if you don't hear back, follow up again. Um, on your B2B leads, I also would definitely reach out and connect with people on LinkedIn if you're using LinkedIn. If not, probably that's a whole other <laughs> workshop we could do. Um, if you're using LinkedIn, when you reach out to connect, be sure to include a note that says why you're, um, where you met the person, why you want to continue the conversation. It definitely increases the likelihood of them remembering you and accepting your request. Um, as for your swag takers, and the Chotsky takers, you never know. Sometimes these leads might seem lousy at first, but they really can convert into real opportunities. So I wouldn't write them off altogether. I would still follow up, but it's fine if they get a less, a less personalized, more automated campaign. You know, send them a mass email thanking them for coming by, invite them to come to, to for a demo or to follow along with you on social media so they can see your new products and services. The, the bottom line of overall, overall is just, Follow up, keep in touch, and give people that you've got the contact info, that's how you're going to push it further through the sales cycle. Um, so I want to close out today <clears throat> with just talking about um, the really, the last, the most frequently missed. So you've done your first, that's great, you've come back, you sent your first email and that first sales call. That's the easy thing to do, but a lot of times it's the ongoing follow-up that really gets missed, and that's also where a lot of the deals are closed. Um, in the day-to-day -day shuffle of running your business, doing the work, delivering for the customers you already have, it's really hard to remember to then follow up a second, a third, a fourth time with those leads that didn't convert right away. Um, if you use a CRM, use it to remind you. It's awesome to trigger those things. Set reminders for yourself and Outlook. Again, stickies on a wall calendar, whatever you have to do, but find ways to continue that conversation to follow up with the people over time. Um, the first thing, I call it the three-month follow-up, but for your business, this might mean multiple touches within three months or one touch every three months. It just You know your sales cycle best. So how long does it take someone to buy? Um, and again, getting back to you know how quickly that will happen. So regardless what is right for you, a combination of emails, calls, different touches to keep moving people through the sales process, it can't just be that first time. Um, and those are going to be your planned touches. Those are... The, um, well, you're calendaring it out, and you know with each lead, this is your sales process. <clears throat> but then there's sort of the um, unplanned or the um, the more the more just day-to-day follow-ups. The first one is sort of the I thought of you when I saw messages. So that's the – you might be reading something that's of interest. You might see a product that reminds you of them. Any kinds of things. These notes are – they're really non-salesy, but they're a great way to keep in touch with people. So – for example, I was just reading an article on a new offering from Google for Business for how companies can use Google for Business to post sales and offers and deals and events and things like that that really help your SEO. This was really relevant for a prospect that I've been talking to. I sent him an email, and he had kind of gone a little bit dark. Sent him an email, hey, saw this, thought of you, thought it would be really interesting. Guess what? Now he's back in an active sales cycle. Um, it's just the, you know, or even it could be you talked about it, you talked about the nationals. I were in Washington, D.C. So, you know, you talked about the nationals and you see that Max Scherzer, who's a, a pitcher, hit a home run, and that made you think of him. Um, you know, anything like that that just gets it reengaged. Um, the drip marketing, that's getting back to that marketing automation, setting up campaigns that will automatically drip on your prospects over time beyond your three-month sales cycle. So what are those automated things that come through? Um, and then these notions of event messages and shows, if you're going to a show, whether it's the same show where you met or some other event, if you met someone at an event, they're probably more likely to be at a future event. So it's a great way to invite them to attend. Maybe you send them a note that says we're debuting new products or we're offering you discounted tickets because we met you at a former event. We'd love to see you again. Anything that encourages them to come by, check you out in person again, is a great way to re-engage those leads that may have gone a little bit quiet and stay and then reconnect. That you know that that 2010 lead is sort of an amazing example. Usually it's not quite that long a sales cycle, but if she met that person in 2010 at that conference, this other conference just finished, 
So it's possible that they saw her again, and they have been on our list, or we're marketing to them before the show each and every time. So I know we've gone through a whole bunch of show and event marketing things over your lunch hour today. I thank you for sharing it with us. Thank you for sharing it with me. Um, I'm, this is my contact information, and I'm always more than happy to continue the conversation. You can shoot me an email, send me a tweet at me, however is most comfortable for you. Um, this is my contact info. We're going to do a quick Q&A, but if there's any other stuff um, that does come up, feel free, you know, after our Q&A here, feel free to get in touch. Like I said, anytime, I'd love to, ch I'd love to hear from you. Um, so I'm going to turn it back over to Jen. Um, she was... So, big thank you for everything you've taught us today. We're, we're going to take this quick pause now for our second poll of the presentation. As was mentioned earlier, we're offering a complimentary digital marketing consult, um, and that's for all of today's attendees. And when you do that, you're going to get a free Google Chromecast for all those who qualify, as you might have seen Sashi mentioned in the chat. <laughs> the secret, the cat's out of the bag, so to speak. Uh, the, the Google Chromecast is actually something that I can, you can use at the next home show you go to to up your home show game. You can use it to stream live content on your TV and your booth directly from YouTube or wherever you're storing your video content, and to test the TV in general. Really great thing to have. Uh, so this marketing consult that I've been talking about, it's a one-on-one -on -one session. You meet with an expert who gives you recommendations about your digital marketing. During the consult, you're going to sit down, you'll review your website and the marketing that you're currently doing, and we'll give you some suggestions. It's a great opportunity to identify opportunities that you may have missed out on in your online presence and to get some real recommendations from an expert who knows the website business, knows, the, knows what makes an online presence function and successful. So we've got about 62% here who voted. Um, please keep your votes rolling in. Take a moment to answer this. And don't forget to ask about a demo of the Surefire Local Marketing Cloud during the consult. The cool thing about the cloud is it lets you manage all your views right there from a single dashboard. Really useful. Okay, so um, while we're in this poll, we're just going to move over to Q&A. And the first question we've got here comes from Marion. Marion asks, what are the most effective giveaway items at booths? That's a great question. I think we're all wondering what you should give away option. So let's let the expert answer this question. <laughs> Um, thank you, Marion. Well, it depends. It definitely depends how much you want to spend, um, and it also depends, <coughs> excuse me, what industry you are in and what's popular around you. So you can do, you know, I've I've seen everything work. What I I can tell you more what I don't love than what I what what I do love definitely. Like I said, the fidget spinners they're certainly very popular these days. Um, even pens. If you're going to do pens, that's great. I wouldn't get the cheapest pen available. But pens are awesome um, because everyone always needs pens and notepads. Anything that is going to extend your life beyond just when they take it and then they pitch it. I wouldn't do something that's so super cheap just because it's cheap. Um, I'm not a huge fan of water bottles unless you're going to spend the money to get the decent ones. If you are, then they're awesome. Um, I would go for things that are lightweight easy to carry around, and definitely allow people to use over and over again. So it's, there's no one right or wrong answer. Uh, the one thing I would say I don't love are t-shirts. A lot of times they just end up, people take them, people love t-shirts because they seem like a really good premium item, but then, to be honest, they don't wear them. A lot of times they end up either only being worn to cut the grass or they go in the Goodwill bin a little too quickly, so they end up being more expensive than they're worth. Um, but I would just look for things that are fun and relevant to your business and within your budget. It's just, it totally, there's what you can spend, what you can get for a dollar or two dollars a piece versus if you're willing to spend money on a little bit more expensive of an item, the, the categories are so different. Um, on the giveaways, the other thing that we didn't mention before was you can definitely have, I've seen a lot of people do really effectively is do a different giveaway for customers and for clients. So you have your, less expensive tchotchke that you give to anyone who comes by, but you have a nicer gift that's there for any clients or customers that stop by your booth. So that's where you might get the really nice swell water bottle or um, a higher end, any kind of higher end. Maybe it's a 
a lot of people I've seen also giving away the phone char the portable phone chargers. Anything technology oriented people seem to be really into. Um, but the, the nicer gifts just for customers and clients that stop by, it goes a long way in terms of um, building those relationships, even when you're in person with someone who's already, even though they're already paying you, to keep them paying you more and more. Yeah, I love that idea of rewarding your customers for being a customer and kind of incentivizing those people who come to the booth to see the price they could be getting if they were your customer. I think that's really great. Um, we just got a related question from Matthew that I wanted to bring up, and Matthew asked, is it a good idea to give away food at home shows? Sure. People love food, um, especially, I mean, the chocolates are always a huge win. I've also seen a lot of people um, that are doing apples or other kinds of fruit because there is so much candy and so much junk that people really do appreciate when you have something a little healthier, whether it's apples or bananas or things that are sort of clean and easy. The challenge with that is that it's, it's heavier. Um, but you can also do granola bars or other kinds of snacks that aren't just chocolate and candy because sometimes you do have those audiences that want something slightly more healthy, even though, let's be honest, we all love, <laughs> we all love the chocolate. Some shows also give you the opportunity to bring in nicer catering where you could bring in, you know, maybe you brought in a local, um, I was at a, a show out in Chicago last year and someone in their booth had, they arranged with the show that it was okay. You definitely, if you're going to bring in an outsider, you definitely want to arrange with the show, but they had arranged that um, there's this really popular popcorn company in Chicago. And so they brought in a popcorn company in their booth and they were giving away amazing um, kettle corn and caramel corn. And it was from a local vendor that made them feel more connected to the, the region where they were. Um, and it was really fun and it drew a ton of people to their booth. I will say if you go down that road, you end up drawing, and this is the same thing with tchotchkes, if you have something really amazing, you do end up drawing more and more people who are there just for the freebie. But you have to be really on it to engage them in conversation and then ferret out the good leads from the true freebie takers. Thanks, Hillary. The, the next question we have comes from Jean-Francois. Jean asks, if I'm making a draw for a prize, aren't those leads 99% cold? So this is a question about how effective it is to do a drawing for a prize. Um, yes and no. So the goal is having those leads so that you can follow up with them and see how real they are. Um, because those leads, they're leads that you probably wouldn't have had otherwise. So there's, there's two pieces to a one is getting the leads that you wouldn't have gotten and then making sure that you follow up to see who's cold and who really in there could be an opportunity. And it's also a way to get at those people who may be real leads but didn't want to hand over their contact information. You now have a way to really ask for it because they're more intrigued with the thing that you're giving away. The, the whole goal with a raffle is it costs you very little to get a lot of leads because you're not going to be giving away, you know, even if it costs you two, three hundred dollars because you do a nice, a really nice prize or even more if you do something really nice, it's, it's a way to get more and more leads that you may or may not have gotten otherwise. The, the next question that we've got is from Bentley. And Bentley says, I'm starting a new company to produce and sell a new product. Any help on breaking into wholesale to big box slash chain stores? <laughs> oh, Bentley, we could spend hours talking about this. Um, <laughs> I will tell you that you need to be really, really targeted in your messaging. If your product is something that you can send samples of, the key to getting into big box stores is to find the right buyer, which you can do through, if you're going to trade shows, um, where they have the buyers and they make some trade shows make their buyer list available. Um, if not, you can do a lot of digging online, digging through LinkedIn but to try to find it's, Work any networks and connections you can to find the right buyer within the big box store and then send them a package with a sample of your product. Make sure you include all your marketing materials for this is what it is, this is how much it, you know, here's the wholesale price, here's your MSRP, um, and this is what the display would look like, all those kinds of things, and wholesale minimums, cases, all that sort of stuff, those details. Send a sample, and when you send it, make sure you send it FedEx priority overnight, whatever that may cost. Um, the way to land on a buyer's desk, that's the only way to get on a buyer's desk is if it comes FedEx priority overnight, 
versus sending it regular mail or even UPS ground, it will go to the mail room. So the way to land on someone's desk is to send it that, that really expensive shipping way. Great. We're, we're going to actually wrap up Q&A now. If anyone else has questions, you can send them to us via email and we'll get you a response. But we're moving on to what might be my and your favorite part of today's webinar. I, 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 wouldn't, I shouldn't say favorite because all the content that Hillary gave was priceless, really valuable stuff. <laughs> but it's always nice to get a present. So we'll do a little drum roll over here. Today's lucky recipient of a Google Home is Kimberly Barsodi. Congratulations, Kimberly. Please send an email to marketing at surefirelocal.com with your full mailing address so that we can ship this right out to you. Congratulations again. Um, as we're wrapping this up, I wanted to give a huge thanks to Hillary for joining us today and to thank all of the attendees who came out. We hope that you will join us for more of our upcoming webinars. And actually, as a matter of fact, later today at 4 p.m., we'll be hosting a webinar on artificial intelligence and the home contractor journey with Google. So if you're in the mood to learn more, we absolutely recommend that you join that. That will be hosted by Google and our CEO, Chris Morentis. For upcoming webinars and more content, you can go to surefirelocal.com. Right at the top of our homepage, there's a link to access our webinars. If you were napping during the poll, I'm going to mention one last time that we're offering Google Chrome Gas for all who get a digital marketing consult. And please just send us an email to marketing at surefirelocal.com if you're interested. Lastly, if you will take a few minutes to fill out the survey at the end, we want to know how we did today and what kinds of topics you want to hear from us about in the future. Thanks again, everyone, for joining us, and we hope you have a wonderful afternoon.